Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for starting your Alabama football Saturday with Crimson Tide kickoff presented by AT&T and Alpha Insurance. As always, John and I are outfitted with original elephant wear from the locker room located on the University Strip. The locker room has been in business for 46 years, and that tells you really all you need to know about Alex Gatewood and the crew at the locker room. Now, the original elephant wear has taken Tuscaloosa by storm. You'll be seeing it not only on John and I this morning, but on a lot of people today and tonight at the Alabama football game. And that's because Alabama fans want to show up in Alabama original elephant wear. Now, you can go by the locker room Monday through Saturday, or you can visit them online at www.locker-room.biz. You can even order online through the locker room. John? Well, Gary, all week long, WVUA News has been honoring veterans here in West Alabama. Indeed we have. And last night, WVUA's Matt McCoy sat down with seven World War II heroes who also played football at Alabama. Here's their story. I said one thing, I'd never get married and I'd never leave a pregnant woman behind, and I did both because I, I felt like you were never going to come back. And lieutenants were very expendable in World War II, and... And I just felt like that, uh, you know, you, you just did what you had to do. You had to defend your country. You didn't want the Germans to run the world. And because of their courage and devotion to their country and Alabama football, 13 of those veterans featured in the book, When Winning Was Everything, are back in their college stomping ground to be honored. I haven't seen many of these men in over 60 years. So they, they got old, bald, fat, and wrinkled, but their eyes didn't change. The eyes looked the same. It was a... A beautiful thing, okay? a bonding that I didn't, didn't realize I was having way back then. It's unbelievable, really. I mean, when the guy called me and said, you know, how would you like to be in the book? And I said, well, look, you know, I didn't get in until the end of the war. He said, that doesn't matter. He said, that it's happened to a lot of people. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's a huge honor. To see a lot of old friends, but then you... Yeah. Talking with the old friends, you you end up talking to them about some old friends that are no longer with us. I didn't know very many of them because uh, we only played on the freshman team and we bit scrimmage with the varsity, but some of those guys I didn't like very much. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was okay and it was nice to see these guys and they're all so friendly and everything and they're all did what I did, so it was really nice talking with some of them, yeah. The University of Alabama will honor these veterans with a ceremony at Saturday's game against Mississippi State. Now that's the main reason I came down here. I just, everybody that I knew all in Birmingham, I job with them by going down here. And this one tell me to wave at them, this one tell me to do this. I tell everybody the same thing. I drop my walking cane, that's to tell them hello, but that's the greatest feeling. I may be the one, only one I could guy crying there. And it was, a, it was an exciting invitation that I, I knew I had to make it. It's a, your relationship with God and your family and country, and then after that come a bonding of the football at Alabama. It's a legacy that is unequal. I tell you, to see a hundred and what, the hundred and two thousand yeah, there, oh my. When we played, we had 35,000 in the stadium. And then we used to go up and play in Legion Field, and I think they were is about 35 or 30. But playing in front of 100,000 people, oh my God, I hope I don't trip or make a mistake <laughs> walking out there. <laughs> For Crimson Tide Kickoff, I'm Matt McCoy. Matt, thanks a lot. Also tonight, the Alabama Crimson Tide will be wearing their Nike Pro Combat uniforms. As a gesture to honor veterans, the uniform will feature an American flag patch on the right sleeve and the stars on the flag will face the right, which is military protocol. Also, as a gesture to Coach Paul Bear Bryant, a houndstooth pattern will be incorporated into the uniform's number. They look good, don't they, Gary? I like them. I like them a lot. I think the fans are going to enjoy them tonight as well. well our first guest this morning came to Alabama as a highly decorated quarterback out of the state of Arkansas, wound up finishing his career as a tight end including a game-winning catch against Kentucky in 1988. We welcome in Gene Newberry. Gene, how are you doing this morning? Doing great. I appreciate you having me. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, let's get right into it. Last weekend against LSU wasn't Alabama's brightest moment. The Tide had its opportunities. It seemed like the game, though, came down to who could make the plays that counted the most, and LSU made them, and, and Alabama just didn't make enough of them. It did, and, you know, unfortunately in the fourth quarter, you know, they – 
got a couple plays and really almost seemed like a lot of them were fingertip uh, plays by them and uh, you know playing down at Death Valley is always a tough task for any team any any uh, away game is tough in the SEC and Alabama just didn't have it at the very last uh, you know couple minutes of the game. As I mentioned you uh, came to Alabama as a parade high school All-American out of Arkansas you know what it's like to be a quarterback at this school where Every position fans follow, but particularly the quarterback position. Greg McElroy last year, you can't do any better, 14-0 in a national championship. And has had a good season this year, but a couple of losses. And uh, that's just the nature of the position. When you lose, fans find flaws. And, you know, from everything from holding the ball too long to checking it down too soon, people, he's had his critics this year. Your thoughts on how he's played? Well, I tell you, uh, the main way that you judge a quarterback in any league, it doesn't matter. It's not statistics. It's not your completion percentage. It's your wins and losses. And the, the guy's been a starter for you know, almost two full seasons, and he's lost two games, and uh, that's very hard to beat. So, uh, you know, you got to tip your hat to Greg. He's, he's going to have a lot more critics in a lot of schools. You know, if you go to Michigan or Notre Dame or Alabama, uh, you're going to have critics when you don't play well. And there's some games he probably could have played better, but to only have two losses in two seasons, uh, that's, that's very difficult to ask of any quarterback, and I, I think you got to tip your hat to him. You know, when there is a little anxiety about the team, the most popular player is always the backup quarterback. That is a very talented redshirt freshman, A.J. McCarron, that sits behind McElroy. When we've seen glimpses of him, he sure looks like he, he just got that look of a quarterback. Good feel in the pocket. Throws a great ball, tall. Uh, your thoughts on him based on what you've seen, and, and do you think that he might get some playing time tonight? I hope, I hope that we're in a position to do that. But, you know, playing Mississippi State, you know, they're coming in this game with a heavy heart, and I'm sure they're going to play us extremely tight. So uh, it's really hard to get backups in uh, in a game of this magnitude. But I'll tell you, during the year, uh, A.J.'s been able to get some playing time, and I was able to watch him some in the preseason, too, in the spring. And, uh, I mean, our future is really bright. And I'll tell you, the biggest battle this spring is going to be between him and Phillip Sims. Uh, that's something to really watch for. They both have a lot of talent, have great arms, and, uh, you know, the future is bright at quarterback in Alabama. Yeah, both those guys, as you mentioned, extremely talented. The game tonight, it's been easy to kind of, from a fan standpoint, lose focus a little bit. Ty lost to LSU, knocked him out of any national championship hopes, all the stuff happening with Auburn and Cam Newton. But this is a big, big football game tonight for Alabama against a quality opponent. Yeah, this is a huge game. Anytime you can go to Florida in the swamp and win a game, which uh, Mississippi State was able to do this year. And also, I mean, they played Auburn all the way to the wire. So they got a really good football team, both sides of the football. And, you know, uh, any team that plays Alabama, this is like their bowl game. This is their biggest game of the year. They're pointing toward this. So we're going to have to really play well to win the game tonight. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate you appreciate having me. Appreciate it. And still much more to come here on Crimson Tide Kickoff. But first, this Crimson Tide Kickoff show is presented, as always, by AT&T and Alpha Insurance. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with much more right here on WBUA-TV. Nick Saban does his radio show every week, and who's that sitting there in the middle? Who's that guy? I don't, I don't know that guy. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, John, I was thrilled to get to the opportunity to be the media guest on the Nick Saban radio show on Thursday night at Buffalo Wild Wings. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me since that appearance, you know, what kind of mood was he in and all this type of stuff. And, yeah, I don't think you can read anything into how they'll play football, but he was relaxed. Uh, was easy going, was in a great mood on, on Thursday night for what it's worth. And I, I had a good time, really enjoyed it. And Tom Roberts, of course, uh, who, who hosts the show, has been doing it for a long time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. My, I told you off the air, I'll tell you on the air now, I think my favorite part of the whole show is when you ask Coach about the little Debbie cookies out there. You know, he said that he doesn't get them for free. I if, know. You, if you didn't hear the interview, I asked him if he got them shipped to him for free, if the company shipped them because of all he the publicity. Yeah. He said no, but fans send them to him all the time. And he says, and they I have get, a feeling he and, doesn't buy, buy too many. And they all. get and yeah. they get eaten up. He said, <laughs> two two a morning with a cup of coffee. Well, we've still just getting started here on Crimson Tide kickoff. We're coming up on the bottom of the hour. Coming up in the second half hour of our program, we'll go live to Starkville, talk with a member of the Bulldogs broadcast team, and get the opposition's take on today's game. Plus, the sports editor of the Tuscaloosa News, our good friend Tommy Dees, will join us to talk more about the Tide. And in our SEC roundup, Les Miles will tell you why he eats grass. Richard? Hey, John and Gary, coming up in the second half hour, also a break down your forecast and talk about any showers that are possible for the game. You're watching Crimson Tide kickoff. Stay with us for much more. <laughs> 